Once upon a time, a very poor woodcutter lived in a tiny cottage in the deep, dark forest with his two children, Hansel and Gretel. His second wife often treated the children badly. She'd leave the fire burn down, leave the meagre meals outside, which would attract bears, refuse to chop logs, wouldn't muck out the horses, and would leave them at the market, but they would always be able to find their way home. There's not enough food in this house for us all. There are too many mouths to feed, she declared. And she kept on trying to persuade her husband to abandon his children in the forest. We could take them miles from home so far that they could never find their way back. Maybe someone will find them and give them a home. The woodcutter didn't know what to do. He loved his children dearly and they reminded him of his departed love. Hansel, who one evening had overheard his father's conversation, comforted Gretel. Don't worry, if they do leave us in the forest, we'll find the way home, he said. And slipping out of the house, he filled his pockets with white pebbles, then went back to bed. All night long, the woodcutter's wife made her plight that it was time for the children to make their way in the world, that she deserved time alone with him, until, at dawn, he led Hansel and Gretel away into the forest. But as they went into the depths of trees, Hansel dropped a little white pebble here and there on the mossy green ground. At a certain point, the two children found that they were really alone. The woodcutter had plucked up enough courage to desert them, had mumbled an excuse and was gone. Night fell and the sky above was light and beautiful and full of stars. But the woodcutter did not return. Hansel felt scared, but he tried to hide his feelings and comfort his sister. Trust me, I swear I'll take you home, even if father doesn't come back for us. Luckily, the moon was full that night, and Hansel waited till its cold light filtered through the trees. Now, give me your hand, he said and we'll get home safely. You'll see. The tiny white pebbles gleamed in the moonlight and the children found their way home. Gretel thought it might be best that they climb up the side of the house and up into the window where their beds were. They crept through a half open window without waking their parents. Cold, tired, but thankful to be home again. They slipped into bed. Next day, when their stepmother discovered that Hansel and Gretel had returned, she went into a rage. Stifling her anger in front of the children, she locked her bedroom door, reproaching her husband for failing to carry out her orders. The woodcutter protested, torn as he was between shame and fear of disobeying his cruel wife. The stepmother kept Hansel and Gretel under lock and key all day, with nothing for supper but a sip of water and some hard bread. All night, husband and wife shouted at one another, and when dawn came, the woodcutter led the children out into the forest. Gretel, however, had not eaten her bread, and as she walked through the trees, she left a trail of crumbs behind her to mark the way. But the little girl had forgotten about the hungry birds that lived in the forest. When they saw her, they flocked along behind and in no time at all had eaten all the crumbs. Again, with a lame excuse, the woodcutter left his two children by themselves. I've left a trail, Gretel declared. But when night fell, they saw to their horror that all the crumbs had gone. I'm cold and hungry and I want to go home, they said to one another. Don't worry, we will find a way back. Gretel tried to encourage her brother, but he too shivered when he glimpsed frightening shadows and evil eyes around them in the darkness. All night, the two children huddled together for warmth at the foot of a large tree. When dawn broke, they started to wander about the forest, seeking a path. But all hope soon faded. They were well and truly lost. On they walked and walked and walked, their feet sore and their bellies empty. So suddenly 
they came across a strange cottage in the middle of a clearing. Around the cottage, there was an unbroken circle of large white mushrooms. There was a sea of beautiful wildflowers, poppies and bluebells, even dandelions and daisies shone in the early morning sunshine. The smell of freshly baked bread wafted towards them. And another smell we all love. This is chocolate! gasped Hansel as he broke a lump of plaster from the wall. And this is icing, exclaimed Gretel, putting another piece of wall in her mouth. Starving but delighted, the children began to eat pieces of nougat and chunks of fudge and the most delicious chunks of honeycomb, broken off from the cottage roof overhanging the doorframe. Isn't this delicious, said Gretel with her mouth full. Nom, nom. She had never tasted anything so tasty. We'll stay here, Hansel declared, munching a bit of nougat. They were just about to try a piece of the biscuit door when it quietly swung open. Well, well, said a kind-eyed woman, peering out with a knowing glare. And haven't you children got a sweet tooth? Come in, come in. You've got nothing to fear. And luckily for Hansel and Gretel, however, the sugar cottage belonged to a witch. Her trap for catching unwary victims. You're nothing but skin and bones, said the witch, handing him a large chunk of gingerbread, of thick gingerbread. He chomped on it loudly, spittle spraying out of his open mouth as he muttered how delicious it was. Then she served them a good meal. Milk and pancakes with sugar, apples and nuts. A fried egg in butter. Many rounds of waffles, maple toast with bacon and a huge cup of hot cocoa. Afterwards, she made two nice beds for them, decked in white. Hansel and Gretel went to bed, thinking they were in heaven. But the woman had only pretended to be friendly. She was a wicked witch, like Baba Yaga, who was lying in wait there for children. She had built her house of bread only in order to lure them to her. And if she captured one, she would kill him, cook him, and eat him. And for her, that was a day to celebrate. Witches have red eyes and can't see very far, but they have a sense of smell like animals and they know when humans are approaching. The next day, she fed them both breakfast and once they'd finished, she led Hansel past the cooker and into a small room. She pushed him in, locking Hansel into a cage, shouting, I shall fatten you up and eat you. You can do the housework, she told Gretel, shoving a broom into her hand. Do it, or else I make you watch me eat him, and then I'll make a meal out of you too. As luck would have it, the witch had very bad eyesight, and when Gretel smeared butter on her glasses... She could see even less. Let me feel your finger, said the witch to Hansel every day to check if he was getting any less bony. Now, Gretel had brought her brother, a brother, a chicken bone. And when the witch went to touch his finger, Hansel held out the bone. You're still much too thin, she complained. One day, the witch grew tired of waiting. Light the oven, she told Gretel. We're going to have a tasty roasted boy today. A little later, hungry and impatient, she went on, run and see if the oven is hot enough. Gretel returned and said, oh, I'm not sure if it is hot enough or not. Angrily, the witch screamed at the little girl, useless child. All right, I'll see for myself. But when the witch bent down to peer inside the oven and check the heat, Gretel gave her a tremendous push 
and slammed the oven door shut behind her. The witch had come to a fit and proper end. Gretel ran to set her brother free, and they made quite sure that the oven door was tightly shut behind the witch. Just to be on the safe side, they fastened it firmly with a large padlock, and Gretel kept the key. Then they stayed for several days to eat some more of the house till they discovered amongst the witch's belongings a huge chocolate egg. Inside lay a casket of gold coins. The witch is now burnt to a cinder, said Hansel, so we'll take the treasure with us. They filled a large basket with food and set off into the forest to search for the way home. This time, luck was with them, and on the second day, they saw their father come out of the house towards them, weeping. Your stepmother has left us. I should never have done this to you. Come home with me now, my dear children. The two children hugged the woodcutter. Promise me you'll never desert us again, said Gretel throwing her arms around her father's neck. Hansel opened the casket. Look, father, we're rich now. You'll never go hungry. We have a tale to tell you, father, and I'm sure that children, years from now, will be hearing it and wondering what happened. And they all lived happily together ever after.